Even though Arc Raiders does run incredibly well and is widely praised for how optimized it is on launch, there are still some issues with its visual presentation that I would like to address through this video and through the whole settings guide. I have a couple presets that will help to address that more clearly, and I'll also be explaining my reasoning and why I'm choosing certain settings as we go through the video. All the timestamps are down in the description and of course in the timeline with the presets placed at the end. If you need help figuring out your performance issues in Arc Raiders, please do not hesitate to join my Discord. It is the first link in the YouTube description, or you can also always ask me live on Twitch or in the comment section down below. Anyways, let's just jump straight into it. Let's get to the first thing, which is RTX Global Illumination Quality. Now this just controls the amount of rays that are used to calculate the global lighting in the game. It is very important to the presentation of the game overall, and it does have a setting that completely disables any sort of ray tracing and just uses baked pre-calculated lighting data. For those of you who are aiming for the highest FPS possible, you're probably going to want to go with static. With static being on the left here, with epic dynamic on the right and everything in between going from lowest to highest you can see that static definitely has a difference in presentation here versus some of the higher ray traced global illumination options however i think the main reason why a lot of competitive players are going to still run static is because when you turn on global illumination quality a lot of things start to gain a lot of shadowing which may make it harder for you to see some things hiding in certain corners you can see here especially behind this bush that is a lot easier to see what's behind there when you're not using the global illumination features. For me though, I think that this shadowing definitely helps with the presentation of the game. And for me, and for those of you who are more focused on having a cinematic experience, I think dynamic high is the best of both worlds. I would avoid things like dynamic low because as you can see when I walk over here, certain areas of the map will tend to look way darker than they really should. And the shadowing kind of just messes up and it just gets very oddly dark in certain situations. Not to mention some metallic objects tend to glow in the dark. It's not doing it in this specific case, but I'll put a screenshot of what that looks like on screen. It is those graphical issues that make me steer clear from dynamic low and medium and stick to high. Epic doesn't really provide much of a image improvement, but it drastically cuts your performance. So for me, I think high is the sweet spot for those of you who are trying to get a cinematic experience. Next up is view distance. And this is something that I think should be set to epic for virtually everybody. And you should lower every other setting before really touching this as depending on how low you go with epic or with the view distance, which controls how far higher quality versions of game assets start to render in, you're going to see that when you start to drop this, the, f the things in the distance start to get really bad and low just starts to get rid of objects entirely in places and distances that you're probably going to be looking at, especially if you're fighting in maybe a more long range engagement. But the performance difference, especially between high and epic is substantial. I don't know if that's worth it for most players. So if we're really struggling for performance, you can drop this to high. But for everybody else, I think epic is really where you're going to want to be here. And you shouldn't sacrifice this in nearly every single case unless you are really struggling for performance. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't cover upscalers at the start of this and that's because anti-aliasing sort of relates to that. This anti-aliasing option only affects the game performance and the quality of the game when you're using either TAAU or TSR. Did I get that right? Is it TSR? I can never remember these names because they suck. Yep, TSR. And what I just said there might be a clue as to my opinion on that. Uh, you should probably never run TSR or TAAU solely because I think the image is not stable enough to warrant it even on the highest anti-aliasing setting, which is Epic, with either option. I think at least XCSS on native quality, oh my God, they have so many options, look superior to TSR in basically every regard. And TAAU is a weaker version of TSR, so I would not even keep that in the running at all. If you're gonna use either of these, use TSR. But at that point, I would recommend just using something like Intel's XCSS at native quality, or FSR3 at native quality, whatever you choose. And of course, to note as well, I do think DLSS is the superior option here out of all of them. Obviously, if you don't have a card that can support DLSS, then that might be a problem too. 
If your card does support DLSS, then I would recommend using the transform model in my opinion. I have seen some opinion online that the CNN model does help with some of the shimmering in the game. Even still, I prefer the sharpness that the newer transform model gives with DLSS 4 than the older CNN model with its slightly more blurry appearance. One thing that you might have noticed as well in the background as I'm just sitting here is that the... Is that a rope or... A, I think that's a rope. That is a rope. The rope that that drone is attached to ahead of me looks way more blurry in motion with the CNN model, as you can see there, than with the Transformer model. And I think that blur in, mo in motion is kind of distracting for certain thin wires and stuff like that, which is why I prefer the Transformer model's ability to clean up more of that ghosting in motion. But yeah, fairly self-explanatory. DLSS on top of the Transformer, then DLSS CNN, AxiSS slash FSR3, and then just throw out TSR and TAU, just don't use them. And that loops us back to anti-aliasing quality where this doesn't matter because you're probably not going to use TAU or TSR anyway. Shadows is next. The biggest thing you're going to see with shadows is its effect on moving shadows. So even when you run the highest quality, which is Shadows Epic, shadows tend to flicker and simmer a lot in motion. So you can see here, like even with this drone moving back and forth, uh, this drone has a very sizzly frame and so does my character. When you go to low shadow quality, this is going to completely go away. But this does help with performance. You may lose out on seeing some people's shadows before you see them in certain combat scenarios. So I would recommend for even competitive players to avoid running low and leave it for people who absolutely need the performance. Medium just is too low of a resolution of the shadows in my opinion. So I would stick to high for most players. And if you really need the extra little bit of performance, dropping down to medium can help with that while still maintaining these dynamic shadows. That would probably be what I'd recommend to most competitive players. Next up is post-processing. Now, this says in-game that it handles, quote, motion blur, bloom, and lens flares, which is correct, but it has a much more important impact on ambient occlusion in the game. And if you're wondering what ambient occlusion is, it's basically detail shadowing around corners in video games. You've probably seen, if you watched my Tarkov settings guide, for instance, Tarkov has horizon-based ambient occlusion. This game, I believe, uses screen space ambient occlusion. But regardless of the method, this does control the quality with which you get those detail shadows, which can make things blend into the environment a lot more. Now, as you might know, if you've watched some of my previous videos, I do like ambient occlusion in games. I think it does allow things to fit into the scene a lot more. But this game does have a massive issue with shimmering on foliage that's affected by this ambient occlusion tech. You'll see as I'm walking around this grass right here that it shimmers like crazy just when I'm walking around near it with my camera near it. This is accentuated on maps like Dam Battlegrounds that have those massive swamps, or I would assume on Blue Gate where there's a lot of uh, foliage, so I have not gone to Blue Gate myself yet. That's why for those of you who play competitively, I think low is going to be where you're going to want to go. Even though it disables all the ambient occlusion in the game, this fizzling effect on foliage completely goes away, which I believe is much more competitively viable than having all of this fizzling foliage blocking up what you're looking at. Even still, for my preset, I probably will still be running post-processing on medium for ambient occlusion because I believe it's that important to how a lot of objects look within a scene. Next up is texture quality, which controls the quality of the terrain texture along with the anisotropic filtering quality and I would believe the texture streaming pool. If this is Unreal Engine 5 game, I would assume they're probably adjusting that size as well. You can see right now, even on epic textures in the practice range, I'm only utilizing 3.3 gigabytes of VRAM. So I feel like using higher quality textures for most players, unless you have an absurdly low amount of VRAM, should be fine. To clarify as well, anisotropic filtering is how textures look when they're at angles that are very tight on the camera. That doesn't make any sense, but you get what I mean. Put put an image on screen. Just put it. I can't speak anymore. Just put the damn image on. You can see that's what I'm talking about. Okay, that that this the, the tight angle, the acute acute. I remember geometry. That's an acute angle. Wow, I, my mind's evolving, holy shit. But yeah, when it's at angles that are tight to the camera, that's the words that we're gonna use, sure. Um, that's what the quality of texture quality also controls too. For most of you, especially if you're above, if you're at eight gigs of VM or above, I don't think Epic Textures is going to be any concern. Though, 
uh, if there is a concern, you can always just turn down the streaming quality slightly and you should be just fine. Now, effects quality is something that I thought was controlling only particles and the subsurface scattering of skin. I thought this description was pretty accurate, but I did, however, see online from Benchmarking, which I will shout at his channel and I'll put a link to his guide, I believe I could find that and put that down below, is that effects quality can also control how bumpy textures look on the ground. It's typically hard to see in most gameplay, and it only changes between medium and high. So low and medium look roughly the same in terms of that, and then high and epic look roughly the same in terms of that as well. Effects quality also controls the clouds too, but I feel like for this quality setting, you're going to want to either aim for high effects quality or low. And even though low quality affects the clouds and makes the clouds look like they're drawn out of... Um, what? I just got like Thanos snapped. What the fuck was that? Did the, the, the timer run out? I guess we'll just gloss over that. I'll be back in a second. Um, all right, so <laughs> um, we're back. I don't know what that was. Um, I got to get back. I'm not sure of thought, dude. Though high performs a little bit worse than the low option does here, it makes up for it with the quality of the clouds and the quality of the ground as you're walking around, though that's more of a subtle adjustment. Reflections quality is pretty easy to show when you put it side by side. Low reflections seem to just use really low quality cube map reflections, while everything else uses screen space reflections. So basically anything that's on the screen is reflected down into whatever the reflective surface is and the quality does get slightly higher as you pump it up from medium to high to epic. I think for most people the medium quality reflections will be enough at a passing glance to pass the fact that it's a screen space reflection and it might save you a little bit of performance in scenes where there are a lot of reflections though typically this isn't really a hard hitter anyway. That's why I think for basically anybody, you're probably going to rock the medium reflections quality. If you're a real snob for every drop of performance you could get, you could go to low, but it's really not going to net you much performance gain at all. And I think the extra screen space reflections do look nice enough to just leave them in at medium. Foliage quality is quite simple. It controls the density of foliage on the map. This one's pretty quick and easy. I'm going to be running high for mine just because that seems like a good mix in being able to spot players in thick grass versus say running epic where things get a little bit too crazy for my taste. For competitive people you're going to want to run it low obviously you see the foliage is reduced dramatically and it might allow you to see some people on this more clear texture here versus the much more granular and grainy texture of all the dead dry grass on this hill for instance. There's not much of a performance difference for you to make the choice based on that, so just set this based on your personal preference. The last one on the menu is Global Illumination Resolution, which in scientific terms does jack shit. Seriously though, it is a much harder quality difference to spot. I will put an image on screen that I had to capture using a different hairstyle to sort of see the sort of ghosting you see on lower Global Illumination Resolution qualities. By setting this to epic, you will avoid that sort of frizzled look on the screen, but even still, that performance drop you're going to get from going to from high to epic is a good chunk. So you may want to avoid epic, though its performance impact seems to vary depending on the scene with which you test it in. Going down to low doesn't have too big a performance gain, though if you didn't notice the difference between low and high, then going to low might help you get that extra little bit of performance, again, depending on the scene. That's basically it. I tried to make this video as quick as possible, and I'm sure it's still going to be like 20 minutes long, and I'm going to cry at the end of this. You're going to see Editor Me is going to put a note, and I'm going to be disappointed that I made it this long. But nonetheless, I felt it was important to sort of yap about this for a while and get my thoughts out on what I think the best settings are for our graders. I will be playing this more. I'll be streaming this live on my Twitch and my YouTube channel. Obviously, everything is linked down below. And again, I want to stress, if you need help, join my Discord. It is the first link down below. Thousands of people are there who can help you out with your performance issues for either Arc Raiders or other games or just general PC performance questions. I'm really proud of the community we made there. And thank you to those of you who stuck around as I've been taking my little hiatus. Anywho, I'll be back next week for Tarkov 1.0. And this will be Kalem. Locking out. Later.